said the next 30 days would be crucial as the U.S. cases rise to more than 164 thousand the highest in the world president trump also sought to reassure americans that authorities were ramping up distribution of desperately needed equipment such as ventilators and personal protective gear he also offered a stark warning saying challenging times are ahead for the next 30 days take a listen and we appreciate you being here yesterday i announced that we would be extending our social distance guidelines through the end of april this is based on modeling that shows the peak in fatalities will not arrive for another two weeks. The same modeling also shows that by very vigorously following these guidelines, we could save more than one million American lives. Think of that, one million American lives. Our future is in our own hands, and the choices and sacrifices we make will determine the fate of this virus. and really the fate of our victory, we will have a great victory. We have no other choice. Every one of us has a role to play in winning this war. Every citizen, family, and business can make the difference in stopping the virus. This is our shared patriotic duty. Challenging times are ahead for the next 30 days. And this is a very vital 30 days. We're sort of putting it all on the line, this 30 days, so important because we have to get back. But the more we dedicate ourselves today, the more quickly we will emerge on the other side of the crisis. And that's the time we're waiting for. The more we commit ourselves now, the sooner we can win the fight and return to our lives. Coronavirus, over one million Americans have now been tested more than any other country by far. Not Just like tests for flu or strep, where you go to the doctors, you can get the test done, you can get an answer within minutes of having this test done. Now, uh, with those tests being approved for Abbott and for others, these are available around the country. They're planning to scale up the number of tests that can be put out throughout the country over the next month, and patients can get the answer within as little as 15 to 5 minutes. And then, of course, an appropriate plan of treatment can be given. Um, we at FDA are working quickly uh, with Abbott as well and other testing approaches, and normally these tests take months to develop. I was on the phone today with the Abbott CEO. He told me that normally this is a 9 to 12 month approach to developing a point of care test. They did this in collaboration with FDA and U.S. government within weeks. Abbott has shared that they will be delivering these tests tomorrow and then will be ramping up. Just have to emphasize one thing, the most innovative and safe products come from the private sector in partnership with government, taking an all hands on deck approach, just like in this case. This could be seasonal, seasonal cyclical virus. So, and maybe both of you could comment on this and Dr. Burks as well. Are you prepared for this to strike again, say, in the fall? All the efforts that are taking place right now to contain this, to be proactive, uh, and yeah. you do We're prepared. Do I hope it doesn't happen. Doctor, would you like to say something about that? I hope it doesn't happen, but we're certainly prepared. In fact, I would anticipate that that would actually happen because of the degree of transmissibility. However, if you come back in the fall, it will be a totally different ball game of what happened when we first got hit with it in the beginning of this year. There will be several things that will be different. Our ability to go out and be able to test, identify, isolate, and contact trace will be orders of magnitude better than what it was just a couple of months ago. In addition, we have a number of clinical trials that are looking at a variety of therapeutic interventions. We hope one or more of them will be available. And importantly, as I mentioned to you many times at these briefings, is that we have a vaccine that's on track and multiple other candidates. So I would anticipate that, you know, a year to a year and a half, we'd be able to do it under an emergency use. If we start seeing an efficacy signal, we may be able to even use a vaccine at the next season. So things are going to be very, very different. What we're going through now is going to be more than just lessons learned. It's going to be things that we have available to us that we did not have before. 
The U.S. death toll from the coronavirus pandemic passed 3,000 according to the running tally compiled by the Johns Hopkins University with more than 163,000 confirmed cases. The U.S. has recorded 3,008 deaths according to the tally while its 163,429 cases are by far the highest national number ahead of Italy, Spain and China. President Trump has been criticized for an initially slow response by the federal government to the now accelerating pandemic spread. Harrowing scenes from hospitals earlier in New York and elsewhere revealed a health system unprepared with basic supplies such as face masks as well as life-saving devices like respirators. And a much-needed sign of hope as the aptly named USNS or U.S. Navy ship Comfort docked into New York Harbor. Take a look. At this crucial moment, this ship arriving is not just an example of help arriving in a physical form. It's not just about the beds and the doctors and the equipment. It's also about hope. It's also about boosting the morale of New Yorkers who are going through so much. It's about saying to our heroes in those hospitals that help has come, that our nation has heard our plea for help here in New York City. And there could not be a better example of all of America pulling for New York City than the arrival of the USNS Comfort. It's a major, major moment in this long battle that we will be fighting against the coronavirus. This great ship will support civil authorities by increasing medical capacity and collaboration for medical assistance. Not treating COVID-19 patients, but by acting as a relief valve for other urgent needs. Freeing New York's hospitals and our precious medical professionals to focus on this pandemic. From the administrator, the last time this great hospital ship, all 70,000 tons of her, was in New York, was in the wake of 9-11, where she served as a respite and comfort for first responders working around the clock. Today, like then, we bring a message to all New Yorkers. Now your Navy has returned, and we are with you, committed in this fight. The Navy's USNS Comfort, which has space for 1,000 beds and a dozen operating rooms, docked in a Manhattan pier around 11 a.m. local time after departing Virginia on Saturday. The Comfort will care for New Yorkers requiring intensive care unrelated to the coronavirus, easing the burden on hospital network overwhelmed by an influx of COVID-19 patients. Its arrival came as Virginia, Maryland, and the capital Washington became the latest areas to restrict citizens' movements, meaning almost three-quarters of Americans are now living or about to live under various phases of lockdowns. Worse affected, New York is ramping up hospital capacity and taking delivery of desperately needed medical supplies as it races against time. The U.S. now has the highest number of confirmed cases in the world, more than 163,000 according to a running tally by Johns Hopkins. University, the virus has claimed more than 3,000 lives in the country, including more than 1,200 in New York State alone.